unless you've been living under a rock, you've heard of eBay Turbo Kits, and that was all the buzz for a while. And now Amazon is kind of the thing where everybody gets their stuff and you can buy this kit and it's 900 bucks and it comes with, you know, everything you theoretically need to put it together, whether it works or not, we'll test. You pretty much got the biggest kit. It's got everything in it. Yes. Today, we're gonna find out what works, what's worth getting. Is it worth getting the base kit that has just the bare turbo manifolds, you know, the bones of it, or do you wanna spend the extra money? Is the other stuff, the boost controller, the blow-off valve, the wastegate, is that actually worth buying? So this is a stainless steel turbo manifold. It does have a crossover on it because it's a single turbo setup. So this was one of the few things in the kit that does need to be welded. But so the, the headers are gonna be the most important part of the kit. That's what ducks everything correctly. And the fact that they're stainless puts it off to a good start. Obviously you can't have a turbo kit without a turbo. Um, this is a GT45 sized wheel, um, China turbo. This is a Spectre hat, another Amazon deal. Um, this is not included with the kit. This was something Curtis had to buy. The motor that we're gonna be working today uh, is an old 350 out of a truck that I had. It's nothing special, stock iron heads, um, mostly the entire motor stock. It's got a small cam in it and some new valve springs because the old ones were toast. And we're gonna build this just like anybody at home would. You know, we ordered the kit, came in a giant box, no instructions. I, I love those. Why didn't you think it went the other way? This we're in a regular vehicle and that cross member or anything, yeah. it's gonna hit there too. We're about 10 minutes into putting the turbo setup on the motor and we found problem number one, which is there's no physical way you could ever possibly get a spark plug wire onto that plug. It's touching the header, just resting. So we're gonna hit it with a hammer. We got some of the turbo system put on. Um, we did a baseline dyno just to see what the thing made. Made about 300 horsepower and it got oil everywhere. So cheap little splurge, 29.99. 29.99, ship to your door next day. Amazon Prime, Sorry. Let's start. Car. Okay, um, unofficial Amazon rep. Be careful what you say about Amazon because they know where you sleep. Valve covers, hopefully no more leaky. Um, they're kind of shiny and covered in oil. We just gotta bolt more turbo stuff together now. We've got the manifolds on. Um, Curtis will drop the turbo on pretty quick. And we've yeah. just got a lot of piping to do to get everything to kind of play with each other. So I found this neat piece of uh, fuel tank gasket. It seems to fit fairly well over the carb, so that's what we're gonna use to seal the hat. So that is one of the difficulties of the kit, is that half the fasteners are metric, half of them are standard, so you end up having to use twice as many wrenches to do the same job. We got a turbo, we've got an intercooler, we got a hat, now we just have to connect the dots. So the whole kit is based on like three inch intake tube, um, comes with a whole bunch of three inch silicone couplers. Everything kind of slots together and gets clamped down. This is what the blow off valve mounts to, so this is an immediate fail. This part of the blow off valve flange is way too small from our kit. So obviously if you're handy with a welder, you can make yourself a nice beautiful uh, stanchion. Uh, if not, what you could do is basically reduce this down to two, back to three, back to two, back to three. Which means buying extra couplers and putting a restriction in your yeah. intake, which doesn't make any sense.
We've got to worry about where we get the exhaust out. Yeah. We've got to plumb up all this stuff. So none of this really comes with any good instructions. It's a universal kit that's kind of like, you figure it out. So this is the one piece of paper that they include in the kit, which as you can see, doesn't give you a whole lot of insight on much at all. And it's hot here. <laughs> Third fail so far. Uh, way too small for outlet of turbo. We'll either have to get a coupler neck down to it to make it fit or just get a different filter. If I leave the top of this open to atmosphere, then it's just gonna run on the spring because we're not influencing the diaphragm with boost. Correct. Okay. It's upside down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so that, le that stays open. Uh -huh. Bottom of it has to go to boost. So we'll send boost pressure in the manifold to a T. One side's gonna go to the wastegate and one side should go to the blow-off valve. Uh, this is bent and or you can also send positive pressure here to open faster. Everything's pretty much here. Now kind of comes the time to see if it works. The turbo is facing forward. Um, that seems to be the only way the system will mount up. Uh, the other way definitely wasn't an option. So we have to do some sort of a weird exhaust routing to send exhaust behind the motor so that it doesn't get drafted back in and give us a false dyno reading. This would be a really weird installation in a car because the pipe points forward and you'd have to do some sort of a 180 to get it out of the way. Um, we've got all of Steve's expertise on the dyno cell computer um, just to make sure things are the right temperature and that nothing's going to blow up. So. Like that's too much boost. So you, did you cut it off at 13 and it was still building? Yes. See, in, in 100 RPM, it went from 12 pounds to 13 and a half. Wow. <laughs> and we're only at 4,500 <laughs> RPM. <laughs> Steve's just looking at this going, this is unsafe. This is horrible. This is so someone that gets this that doesn't know anything about how cars work, they and they figure a way to bolt it on and make it make boost and run, and they run 600 it. pound feet of torque, 13 pounds of boost. They can impress, their, they can, they can impress their friends at the garage. <laughs> yeah, you go like, oh, yeah, yeah, now it's rich. I mean, it's just, it just changes so much. With So we didn't have very high expectations for this motor. It's stock iron heads, very small camshaft, and the Amazon turbo kit. It's an interesting combination. We made a ton of torque. We made 650 pound-feet of torque, um, and everything, to its credit, worked. Um, sometimes too well. It worked so well, it made so much boost that it wasn't controllable. And that's a big problem on a turbo kit. And this thing made diesel torque, um, the, that. and it's, it's just it's set on kill. The, the wastegate is inadequate for the amount of boost the turbo can produce, so it just made ridiculous numbers. And if the casual guy put this on a car, it could really blow stuff up. So the issue was that the turbo is a, is a very large turbo, and it's a super functional setup. It just can't get the exhaust out quick enough. So today we took off the driver's side header, and we're gonna add an extra wastegate onto it and see if we can't actually meter the boost properly. So we're gonna weld this on, we're gonna see if it fixes the problem. So now we have wastegate number two. Joe from West Tech did us a solid and TIG welded an extra wastegate mount on here. So everything's bolted up. We'll do some vacuum tubing plumbing and see if we can make some boost and actually control the turbo. So we just made a couple of dyno pulls. Um, everything seems to be working good. We put in a digital boost controller on the engine and we were able to get the boost curve in line with reality, 10 pounds that it held pretty consistently through the pull.
goes, you get what you pay for. And There's no doubt about it. I mean, really with a little different exhaust system, this thing would have been so much smoother. I mean, something that really would have fit. We've got the exhaust facing forward because that's the only way it fit. If we turned it around so it was back over by the brake booster, it wouldn't fit. And then the crossover tube hit the cross member. I don't think a guy can expect to pick this thing up on Friday afternoon and be at the track on Sunday morning. It was some work and most of it was just manipulating and making things fit. Once we got it running, it was actually kind of fun. I it mean, was fun. It was it, really it, fun. It was kind of cool watching this little small block that um, looks like it was in someone's pickup for a while. It was in my pickup. It was in my pickup. <laughs> made 611 pound-feet of torque, made 540 horsepower. You know, I, it's a cast crank, cast piston motor. There was a few nervous moments there when it spiked up to about 18 pounds at 3,500 one Which or two you times. you would come to expect from me. <laughs> we worked hard, but we showed that you can do things on the cheap, but you've got to be a little creative and you've got to be willing to work. You've got to have a few talents. You've got to be able to weld a little bit or at least have a buddy that does. You've got to be scrappy. You've got to be savvy. You've got to have somebody like this that you can ask the right questions to. But we answered them, and at the end of the day, it's cheap, it works, but you've got to be ready to work for it. The best thing at the end of the day was the oil still in it. <laughs> and I don't have any mopping to do. <laughs>